Hello and welcome to The Off Lies. Have you ever made a mistake at work and lived to regret it? When you work on fast and powerful jet aircraft, those mistakes can cost lives. This is the true story of Wing Commander Walter Taffy Holden. He was an engineer in the Royal Air Force who, whilst performing routine maintenance, accidentally took off in an English Electric Lightning. Taffy won a Royal Air Force scholarship to study mechanical engineering at university in 1943. He learned to fly as a pastime on the de Havilland Chipmunk and the T-6 Texan. His goal was to work on frontline aircraft and by 1966 he was in command of the number 33 maintenance unit at RAF Lynham. Here work was carried out on all current aircraft such as the English Electric Canberra and the Lightning. Then his career took a frightening turn. The maintenance unit was relatively small and they only had qualified test pilots for Gloucester Meteors and Canberras. For Lightning flights they would need to request a pilot with the relevant certifications to perform the required testing. The performance of the Lightning was on another level compared to that of other modern jet fighters at the time. It was the first aircraft capable of supercruise, supersonic flight without the use of an afterburner. Number 33 unit was winding down as it was due to be disbanded. Holding up the closure was a particular aircraft, XM135. This is a Lightning F1 wearing number 74 Tiger Squadron colors that performed duties as a display aircraft. This aircraft was the first full production F1 and first flew in November 1959. No test pilots were available after repairs had been made to XM135. This was not an issue due to the nature of what needed to be done. The aircraft needed to be taxied about 35 meters to test different electrical configurations. The engines would need to be spooled to high RPMs, then power cut and brakes applied. At no point did the Lightning need to take to the sky. Holden volunteered to perform the testing. He would communicate with a vehicle following closely by the side of the aircraft. The aircraft's canopy had been removed and the landing gear locked for testing and naturally Holden did not require a helmet or radio for performing ground testing. The very first test went as expected. The engines were pushed to high RPM, then back to idle and brakes were applied and the aircraft moved about 35 meters. Only several tests were needed to be performed before the Lightning could be moved back into the hangar. On the second test, Holden accidentally pushed the throttles past the afterburner gate. This would not be an issue normally. The Lightning required buttons to be pressed behind the throttle to disengage afterburner. Coupled with the huge amount of power produced by these engines on full afterburner, the aircraft quickly gained speed whilst Holden fumbled with the throttle. Even at idle, the brakes would struggle to stop the Lightning from moving thanks to the massive engines. He missed a fuel tanker on the runway in front of him and crossed the main runway as a de Havilland Comet took off over his head. Quickly, the engineer come pilot realized that he was about to meet a fiery end and had to act as the tarmac was running out. There was no time to break, so there was only one option, fly. I am a qualified pilot, but I'm not. I've never flown a jet before. <laughs> <laughs> when that get locked into reheat, you can't steer it. It goes straight like a bullet out of a gun. And uh, I just had to, I was obviously centered on the runway, the lazy runway at the time when, when it all happened. And of course, the first thing that happened was there was a fuel bar that was a trailer just crossing in front of me on the peri track on, on the, I missed it by about 30 or 40 feet. Um, and then the next thing, a Comet aircraft had just taken off in front of me from left to right. And then the third thing was 
street and stalk village in front of me. If I didn't lift it off the ground then, I was going to crash into the village. So there were three escapes in, in less than sort of 30 seconds because that was gathering speed, 180, 200 knots, you see, until I realized what had happened. And fortunately for me, the engine fitter that told me how to start the engines to do this check, he did say, uh, you, you don't go past that um, reheat uh, slot there because if you go past that it locks into reheat it, but you won't need that. <laughs> Thankfully he told me how to get it out of reheat which I had to start thinking about when I found myself you know, going off there. Like <laughs> so it was, a, it was a sort of a, a learning to fly a jet in a matter of uh, 45 seconds. <laughs> he pulled back on the stick. The aircraft leapt into the air, roaring on full afterburner, canopy missing and gear stuck down. Holden disengaged the afterburner. His next priority was to look for the comet that had just taken off before him, but thankfully it was nowhere to be found. He was unable to speak with the tower as he did not have a helmet or radio, and he was now on his own and needing to get the plane down. Due to the high speed, Holden was frantically trying to keep the airfield in sight. Ejection was not possible due to the ground locks being in place to make sure that ground testing was safe. He had to land it back at Lynham. The OC Ops ring rang me up and he said, Taff Holden's airborne in a lightning. So I said, good. I said, I didn't know they had dual control. He said, no, he's on his own. He's on his own. I said, my God, has he gone mad or something? Anyway, I rocketed up to air traffic control and there was this lightning gently going round the circuit very sensible chap you see this wing commander going round the first thing one could see was that he hadn't got the hood back and you know you could see his hair sticking up I mean he hadn't got a helmet on you see what he did was and he very sensible he went round and he changed it to the other runway which was in fact coming sort of going up to meet you if you know what I mean and he came in and I said my god I said he's gonna make it no brake shoot of course None at all. And because the aircraft was terribly, terribly light, I mean, he went to the end of the runway and he pulled up, got out. Had he had a hat on, I'm sure he would have saluted. And he, I, I was first up and he said, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I said, Taff, I said, I'm not at all. I've still got his original 765C, which sort of says five minutes solo. In. Holden knew that the aggressively swept wings meant that the landing speed needed to be fast. He circled the main runway and attempted to land in the opposite direction to which he took off. In the other landing direction, there was a small village he could possibly crash into. On the first two attempts, his speed and attitude were completely wrong and instead he chose to go around. Finally, on the third attempt, he committed. The aircraft he had flown previously were tail draggers. The Lightning uses a tricycle style undercarriage. On his first attempt, the nose was pointed far too high. The tail of XM135 slammed into the runway, breaking the cable of the drogue parachute that was used for slowing the Lightning down. Holden used the brakes to maximum capacity and XM135 came to a halt less than 100 meters before the end of the runway. The entire ordeal lasted 12 minutes. RAF Lynham was filled with staff, some RAF and some civilian contractors. It was impossible to cover this event up. News broke and Holden was posted to Italy out of sight. However, word quickly spread, not only throughout the UK but also Europe, where he was eventually recognised. Naturally, there was an official RAF inquiry. Holden had not acted against any orders and had managed to save himself and the aircraft. There were no grounds to charge him with any offence and he remained in the RAF until he retired in the early 1980s. XM-135 was repaired and returned to service where she flew with trained pilots until 1974 when she was acquired by the Imperial War Museum in Duxford. This aircraft remains there today with details of this amazing and completely true story. 
Holden passed away in 2016 at the age of 90 of natural causes. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and that will promote new content.